So in the past few weeks, we've talked about um, what's happening in Europe, uh, the uh, reform trends in the U.S. Now I see New Zealand's on the tape. Um, which, which, which pot should we keep our eye on? Well, listen, I, we're very happy with the acquisition we made yesterday. You know, we, we're entering the largest cannabis market in the world, which is which is, in potential revenue, which is Europe, with 740 million people. We're doing it at less than 3% of our market cap. Uh, and we have an op- I think we, we think our timing is, is absolutely right. And, um, you know, it was a natural extension of our U.S. business. We're the largest operator in the U.S. We're thinking three, four years out, where's the growth going to come from? Obviously, the U.S. is going to continue to grow, but Europe is starting to move legislation across across the continent, and we think it's going to be a great opportunity for us. And so we decided to make this move into Europe. Does it feel to you uh, right now, at least, it does seem like each incremental headline revolves around uh, medical access, although uh, the sexy headlines here in the U.S. tend to revolve around uh, growth in adult use, growth in recreational use, which is more important, truly? Well, we, we, we have found the trend to be the same. So we saw that first in Canada, where they started with medical, then they moved to adult use. We saw it in the United States, where most of the states started in medical and then moved to adult use. We're seeing in Europe, most of the countries have some form of medical program. They're now expanding those. And now we see Switzerland and Holland this year looking at adult use. Angela Merkel steps down in September. There's going to be an election. Her own party has said that they will support adult use. So if Germany goes adult use, call it sometime in in 2022, it's likely to be a domino effect through Europe. And so that's why the timing was to get in now, build the infrastructure, get the acquired licenses, build the distribution so that we can bring the Cureleaf and select brands over to Europe. So we're very excited about it. But you're right, it is still very much a medical business. And in Europe, it's actually a pharmaceutical business. In the United States, The pharmaceutical companies have not gotten involved uh, in the cannabis sector. Um, In Europe, the pharmaceutical companies are working very closely with a lot of the cannabis companies to try and develop drugs uh, for, for, for their patients. Boris, why do you think that is? Why do you think U.S. pharmaceutical companies haven't gotten more involved? It almost seems like if they did, um, that might uh, increase the push or increase the urgency potentially to, to legalize on a federal level. Well, pharmaceutical companies in Europe take a very different view of, of cannabis. They, it's a natural product. They don't mind working with the biological aspect of natural product. U.S. market is, and the FDA in particular, is very much focused on creating synthetic drugs. So it, it really is, it, it, it's a culture issue. Um, uh, Asia is very much like Europe in that respect. Europe is heading much more to a holistic medical system, one where you know um, um, uh, biological products can be used in the process of medicine, where it is in the United States, we're still very, very synthetic focused. So uh, until cannabis can be produced synthetically and stabilized, I, I don't believe the, can- the pharmaceutical companies in the U.S., given where the FDA is, are going to get involved at this point in time. But it is spreading very quickly in Europe. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.